Full Metal Jacket? I mean, it's a pretty crazy movie. Um, there was an actor, Tim Colcheri, who was cast to play the drill instructor. And Stanley wanted him to audition all of the extras that were going to be in the film. And he thought, this is a great opportunity for you to practice and, and uh, you know, get, learn, you know, learn your lines. And the actor would do it for five or ten minutes. He would, he would audition several uh, of the extras. The, they were called Territorial Army, British Territorial Army. And, um, and, you know, when you yell for five, ten minutes, your throat starts to hurt. And so he'd say, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm done. You know, and now they still had a room full of extras to audition. So Lee Ermey, who played the drill instructor, who was a technical advisor on the film, would, who felt that this role was written for him and perhaps was a little bit like um, Eve, what, Eve Arden. What was it? You know, Eve, what was it? Eve Harrington so from the movie uh, All About Eve. Yeah, that, that there may have been a little bit of Eve Harrington in Lee Ermey, but, but he really wanted that role. So... When Tim would leave, those extras had to be auditioned, and Lee Army would step in front of the camera and in front of those soldiers and say, "What's your major malfunction?" You know, and start yelling at them. And 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 then so Stanley Kubrick, when he watched those audition tapes, he'd see Tim Colcheri kind of doing it, half-assed doing it, and then he'd see this guy who stepped in front of it and and who was who who wasn't acting, who was, and uh, how could he not use? Use Lee Ermey. Lee Ermey was was tremendous, and he came up with. Uh, we used to joke that he had a butt plate in his brain. That he he had a like a metal metal plate because sometimes when you were talking to him, all of a sudden his he, you know, and words would come out of his mouth that had nothing to do with anything that was scripted. It was like he was he was picking up pornography channels from outer space, and uh, things would come out of his mouth. That, I mean. For those, I don't need to repeat them because they're really, really obscene. Um, but, I mean, really, really obscene. And the thing that we didn't get in the film that we kept trying to figure out how to get in was uh, Lee Ermey loved to write poetry. He would write these obscene, this <laughs> obscene poetry about women who kept, a, uh, there was a woman who kept a gorilla caged. And, of course, you didn't know it was a gorilla. There, there was this woman who was making love to this this person and how, you know, it was never described as a person, but there was a big strong and she'd let him out of his cage and they would make love and stuff. And then it would be revealed that she was, she was actually making love with a gorilla. And Stanley kept trying to figure out how to get that poetry into, just as, a, as another facet of that character's mind. We, 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 we shot it. He says to me, he says, uh, you're not a writer, you're a killer. He says, who do you think you are, Mickey Spillane? And, and so that night, I was going to go into his office, and he was going to be in his underwear. And his, he always had that hat on. He would have his hat on, his underwear, and he would read, read me or ask me to read his poetry. Like, you want to see some good writing? Here, read this. You know? And I was going to read his poetry. <laughs> it, would have been, it would have been fantastic, but Stanley thought it was too absurd. You know. <laughs>